determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Through our trials, tribulation, persecution, I'll be faithful. I'm determined. I'm determined. I'm determined. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm determined to sing for Jesus. Yes, I am. I'll be faithful, I'm determined, I'm determined, I'm determined, I'm determined to walk with Jesus, yes I am, yes I am, yes I am. I'm determined to live for Jesus, yes I am. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This month, take the opportunity to learn about your family history. If you have a family member who's had breast cancer, please, if you're at the appropriate age, get your mammogram. If you are a survivor, I challenge you to pay it forward by supporting another young lady who might have just been diagnosed. I want you to stay positive and connected with your loved ones. We ask that you wear pink. If you could wear pink all day, that would be great. If you could wear pink every day, that would be great. But sometime this month, wear pink. And if you need additional information, you can always connect with a support group. Thank you. Today's scripture reading is taken from the first chapter of the book of Job and the 10th verse. And the word of God reads, Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Well, good morning, friends. I welcome you to another Sunday morning worship with Anderson United Methodist Church. Before we get into the word this morning, I would like to share two announcements with you. Uh, first of all, you know, the election is coming up next month, uh, and we hope that all of you, all of you will participate. There are a few things you need to be aware of prior to going to the polls, if you've not already voted somehow. Uh, and that I want to call attention to Initiative 65A, which is medical use of marijuana. That will be on the ballot, and you need to know a little bit about that before you vote. And also, Resolution 47, as it relates to how governors will be elected, you can go to AndersonUMC.org, and there will be a full explanation of these two items that will be on the ballot. And we don't want you to miss out on them. We certainly want you to know about them so that when you vote, you will vote intelligently and know what you're voting for. And the second announcement, the United Methodist Men of Anderson uh, will have their annual uh, can drive, a food drive for the pantry. They're asking you to bring food to, uh, to the church on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 1. Uh, go by the pantry on Wednesday mornings. I'll bring your canned goods to the worship service first Sunday in November. There will be a container there as you go through to receive the elements that you can uh, deposit your canned goods. This is their annual fund uh, food drive for the pantry and pray that you will support them in this effort. You heard the reading of the scripture this morning, Job 1, 10. The hedge around your house. I remember, like no other, beating I got from my mama. My mama was a little bit of lady, but she would tear us up when we get in trouble and do things we shouldn't do. Now, I didn't know it, but my mama had planted some hedges along the house to separate her from our neighbor. My mama and my neighbor did not get along very, very well. So she planted these hedges <laughs> so that she would not have to see my neighbor first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. Well, these hedges grew huge. They became huge, humongous looking things. They were horrible. You couldn't see around them. You couldn't see our house from the street. When you go out, you didn't know if you're going to hit somebody. So I took it upon myself one day to cut those hedges down. And I went out there and I whacked and I whacked and I whacked with a bush hog thing and I whacked and I whacked and I whacked those things down and piled them up so we could burn them. But Lord, when my mama came home, she saw what had taken place. And she asked, who, who, who in the world cut her hedges down? And I said, oh, mama, I did it. I was looking to be, you know, applauded. I was looking to be <laughs> praised for doing it. She said, go out there and get me a switch. And, Lord, she worked on some of me that day. Because, see, those hedges became protection for her. Those hedges became somewhat of a security value for her. And also became somewhat of a boundary. You stay on your side, and I stay on my side. And, you know, I was a little preacher at that time, and I was reading scripture about love your neighbors, yourself, and all that kind of stuff. But she lost her hedges. Have you ever had a time in your life when you feel unprotected? When you had thought maybe the hedge around you had been taken down or had been changed somehow, and now you were open prey to the devil's will. Well, that's what we want to talk about today, the hedge that's around your house and how God put hedges around our homes, around our lives in such a way that we are protected. You heard the song, Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I know you can, Lord. I know you will fight my battles if I just stay still. Well, when that comes a time inside the hedge that God builds around our lives, and interestingly enough, some folks will call it a hedge and some folks will call it a fence. Uh, some folks will call it just a protective wall. But this protective shelter that is around us is often described as protection. It's often described as something useful to keep harm and danger away. You see, when God builds a hedge around our lives, our exposure to danger is lessened. <laughs> and at the same time, our movement is restricted. Oh, this hedge means that we have certain boundaries, we have certain limitations, but we have his protection. You see, inside the hedge, there is safety. Outside the hedge, there is a lot of danger. We're always vulnerable and must depend on God for our substance. What if God tests our faith? 
Would we come through in fine, flying colors? Or would we be wanting or would we be liking in faith? What if we suddenly found that the hedge around us had been removed? That someone like myself had gone out and, and cut your hedges down or taken them away? What would you do? What would you do? What would you think? How would you react? How would you respond? <laughs> we might likely fall into increasing difficulties that, 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 that would try our faith. However, even without a hedge, the faithful will still maintain faith in God's purpose for their lives. As Christians, we are encouraged to know that God is always with us, guiding us, pushing us toward our destiny. You see, his, provision, his hedge shelters us from the enemy. Oh, the enemy who's going through the world like a roaring lion to see whom he can devour. You see, if we walk by faith with or without the hedge, God will continue to be the rock of the joy of our salvation. The joy of our salvation. Well, the text focuses on Job, who was attacked by the devil because of the hedge around his house. You see, Job is described as a righteous and highly favored by God. He had the full package that life offered. <laughs> he had a large and growing family, loving, caring family, a thriving commercial farming business, a loving wife, and, and respect of his friends and his neighbors. He was considered a man. He was considered a man of character who always sought to do the right thing. He was untarnished in his relationship with his neighbor and with God. Job 1 describes him as a perfect man. However, the devil said it was normal for a man with Job's money <laughs> and with the favor of God to be a person of significance and wealth because this hedge was protecting him. And he said, God, uh, Job is, 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 is following you. Job has faith in you because of, of what you're doing from him. You see, the, the favor, God's favor formed a hedge, a barrier, a shelter around Job. Sheltering him from poverty, sheltering him from failure, sheltering him from, from hunger, from failed relationships, from death, and even from, from sickness. You see, the devil claimed that this hedge made it possible for Job to live the perfect life. <laughs> he didn't want for anything, didn't need for anything. But in the great contest, so, 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 so the devil now, I hope you read the whole passage, the devil now sets up this contest, you know, move your hand from him, God, just move the hedge from around him. And God agreed, okay, I'll remove the hedge, but I don't want you to touch him. The church don't touch him. You see, in this great contest, God removed the hedge to demonstrate Job's great faith and devotion. See, God knew, and many of the commentaries said, said God, God knew that, that Job was going to come through and find colors because he knew that, that Job, Job's faith in him was not due to the favor of God, but that God, he loved God. You see, during the test, Job lost his wealth. He lost his health, he lost his family, he lost uh, his reputation, his unblended reputation. But he still remained loyal to God. How many of us, having stuff taken away from us, don't first of all get angry? God, why you let this happen to me? Lord, why, why are you throwing me this way? Why are you treating me like a stepchild? Woo! He lost it all, but he remained loyal to God. You see, the hedge proved to be one of the rewards of God's favor, yes, but it was not the reason for Job's faith. Believers serve God faithfully with or without the hedge. We serve him because he's good and his mercy endures forever. We serve him because he is good and his mercy endures forever. You see, the hedge, the hedge that is around us and the hedge that was around, around Job is, is, is icing on the cake. But we would love God just the same, even without the hedge around our house, around our lives. Now, there are three aspects. Number one, God hedge of protection. 
You see, God protects the faithful with a hedge of protection. It is not a brick wall that prevents trouble from happening to the faithful, but it is a wall that strengthens and supports the faithful when they are victims of the devil's attack. You see, a believer, a believer is not guaranteed that evil will not befall them. No, we're not guaranteed that we won't have bad days and cloudy days. And then, uns- <laughs> uh, you know, some, the song says, you know, I have good days and bad days and all that kind of stuff. So all believers is not, the believer is not guaranteed that evil will not befall them, but he is promised the presence of God that delivers. It does not mean that we have insurance not to fall into difficulties and tragedies and headaches and heartaches. But we have a promise that, lo, I'm with you always. You see, even in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said we would pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us from evil. You see, the hedge does not stop evil from attacking. But when attacked, the hedge gives us strength for the fight. Strength from on high. Strength that gives us the vigor and the, the energy to, to run on and fight on to see what the end is going to be. On occasion, God intercedes and alters the outcome. You see, when Egypt attacked Israel, he stood between them with a pillow of fire. When the water of the Red Sea would have consumed the children of Israel, God held the water back, and he used that same water to destroy their enemies. There are times when he intercedes and he might change the outcome. When we, when we reflect on our own personal history, we too can see how God has protected us from our enemy. Oh, many families have been the subject of attacks have been the subject of tax, of plots, and have been the subject of tricks. Just today, we heard the sad news that the governor of Michigan, the governor of Michigan had a plot out on her from ever since March to to kidnap her. Now, the president had a lot to say about her back in March and how she was not being a willing worker, a willing player to his ploys and plots. And he sickened her out. And here they found 13 persons. And every time I read it, the number go up. It started out with four, and then it was six. And now 13 persons have been arrested in the plot to kidnap the the governor of Michigan and to try her for treason. Is that to stand down or stand over and stand by? Gosh, what are we coming to? Thanks to God's grace that it did not happen. Thanks be to God that her family and her life is still intact. But she did say, if you commit a crime in Michigan, you will pay. (laughs) Well, Psalms 124, 2 says, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, what would we do? Secondly, God hedge of support. You see, God sows into the life of the faithful with a hedge of support. He supports, his support may show itself in various ways, in a variety of ways, including financial, health, and emotional support. God even supports us when we have failed. His support is continuous. You see, often God's love is unconditional, but his favor is continued on our faith in him our life choices, and our directions. You see, if we want his favor, it is essential that we maintain the faith, live the Christian life, and work God's kingdom. God will not support us in our sins. He will not help us commit crimes, conceal ungodliness, our attempt to thrive at the expense of others. It's not that what's going on with us today, that so many, so many, so many, so many are thriving on the expense of others. So much underhandedness going on, so many mistruths, I don't call them what they are, lies, and 
misleading the folks that, hey, go with me and I'm going to do this for you or or, or, go with me and I'm going to promise you this or that. And then thirdly, God hedge keeps us safe. Believers feel safe when we are close to God. You see, safety implies that we are sheltered from harm and danger. But at times... And at the same time, we are provided our daily bread. What makes us feel safe is the knowledge that God will not forsake us. What makes us feel safe is knowing that God will not leave us. He will not leave us on a good sunshiny day. He will not lead us when it's cloudy or he will not lead us when it's dark outside. You see, when Moses reminded them in Deuteronomy 31, 6, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Because it is the Lord your God who who goes with you. He will not fail, nor forsake you. And then in Hebrews 13, 5, For he has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. You see, we rejoice in knowing that God upholds, blesses, and protects the godly family. Is his hedge around our house. Through his divine hedge, God is watching out for our families, protecting, providing, and ensuring our survival and growing from generation to generation. You see, through his divine hedge, God is watching out for for our families. The Reverend H.C. Charles Jr. said it this way, is I don't depend on the security door to protect me. I don't depend on the burglar balls around my windows to protect me. I don't, I don't depend on the alarm that will go off if danger will come to protect me. I don't depend on what's in the nightstand beside my bed to protect me. I depend on God's hedge. I depend on God's head of protection. Reverend Clay Evans puts it another way. He says, all day, all night, angels watch over me, thy Lord. And then he said, you can go on home and pull the covers up over your head. <laughs> because God has angels watching over you. Because of God's hedge, we don't get overly concerned with things. Get tough because his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Because of God's hedge, we don't wallow in self-pity when we slip. Because we fall down, but we get up. Because of God's head, because of the wonderful hedge around us, we don't wither and shrink in the face of trouble because we know trouble don't last always. Because of God's hedge, we can have joy in the midst of sorrow. Because of God's hedge, we can have peace in the midst of confusion. Because of God's hedge, we can have happiness, although all around us is only sadness. Hear me now, because of God's hedge, we can have faith in the midst of doubt. Because of God's hedge, we have love, although we're surrounded by so much hate. Because God is watching over us, we can have hope in the midst of panic because we are our Heavenly Father's children, and He knows. And he knows how much we can bear. Amen. Amen. And amen. Oh, merciful and everlasting God, we are so thankful that we have a reassurance that you are protecting us. And that your hedge of protection surrounds us. And we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to allow that hedge of protection to protect us during this season in our lives. When there's so much hatred and bitterness, so much, so much evil. Protect, O oh God. Protect. Be our fence around us each and every day. And guide and protect us along this pilgrim journey. And be with all of those, O God, who have experienced pain. 
all of those who have experienced isolation, all those who feel that the hedges have been cut down and taken away, let them have the assurance that you promise to be with us always, even to the end of the earth. So bless, bless as we make a selection who will lead us as a country, as a nation, as a people. Bless the process that it is safe. Put a hedge around the election process, oh God. Put a hedge around those who are seeking and those who are praying each and every day for strength. In the precious match, this name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 